Hello my friends, today I will show you how I edit my bird photos. We'll take this image from this and do something like this. As you can see, the composition has changed, the colors are more vivid and bright. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do. This image, if we look, it's a raw image. I shot it with my Sony A1, 200 to 600 millimeter at f6.3, shutter speed 1 over 320, f6.3 at ISO 800. I shot this handheld in my backyard and now let's see how I will edit this. First thing I would like to do is to increase the brightness a little bit and because it is a little underexposed, something like that looks good to me. Then I will put a little bit of contrast, maybe 16, take the highlights down just a tiny little bit and open up the shadow to get more detail into the eye and around the beak. Now our blacks are not blacks anymore, so first let's take care of the white. Hold down option while you move the white to the right. And when you see that you see where you're starting to clip, move on backwards until you don't see those clipping warning anymore. And my whites are set. I'll do the same with the black, but I do want to get some pure black around the eye and around the beak, something like this. So that looks accurate to me. Now I want to bring in some colors into this cardinal. This is a female cardinal. And the way I would like to do that is by using calibration panel. I'll go into the saturation of the blue primary and increase the saturation. If I increase it all the way to the right, you see how all the colors are so bright and vivid. That is obviously too much. So I'll just increase it maybe to around 27. Now by increasing this blue saturation, you can see my sky really blew up in there and it's way too saturated. So for that, I will go into the HSL and I'll take down the blues saturation. And that way I tone it down a little bit, maybe even the aquas. And that looks better. Now the bird stands out more. We'll go back over here and add a little bit of texture, maybe around 20. We'll add some clarity, maybe around 16, and increase the vibrance to about 23. Things are looking great. I want to bring out this sketch light onto the eyeball. So I'll go to my masking and take a radial gradient, draw a radial gradient right on the eye and increase the whites. And that's just going to bring some life into the bird. So far, our editing, we went from this into this, and we're still working on it. So I go to my masking again. I'll create a new mask, and this time I will select my subject. And I just want to brighten it maybe just a tiny little bit overall. So I'm going to increase the exposure just of my bird. You see, I can darken it or I can brighten it. So just a tiny little bit, but not too much. Something like that looks good. Maybe bring the blacks down a little bit to create a little bit more contrast. Great. The next thing I will do, I will scroll down into the sharpening. I'll keep the default sharpening at 40. And then with the masking, I'll hold down option and move it to the right until I'm seeing that I'm only sharpening the bird and the branch, not the background. My number is around 77. Then I'll click remove chromatic aberration and enable profile correction. And now let's move into Photoshop and fix our composition and do a few other tweaks in there. So I'll go to Photo, Edit in, and Edit in Adobe Photoshop 2023. A shortcut for that is just Command E. And by doing Command E, Lightroom sends this image straight into Photoshop. This is an image I was working on this morning. Ignore that. And here is our image. I'm gonna close that panel really quick. The first thing I like to do is duplicate my image. So I'll go Command J. Let's crop it. For the crop, I'll go to the crop uh, tool over here. I like my images eight by 10. That's one of my favorite crops. So um, I will do that. Let's see, I wanna move this bird on the side and I want the eyeball to be on the rule of thirds. Maybe something like that. But now we have these empty pixels on the top and the right, and that's okay. What we can do now is click this content aware of here on the top and then click the check mark. And Photoshop will do its best to fill in those um, empty pixels with the pixels surrounded the area. So because my background is pretty blurry, it should do a pretty good job. There you go. We do have some, you know, 
funny business going on in there, but we'll fix that in a second. Now to fix this funny business over here, what I would like to do is to make a stamp layer option. Uh, it's command option shift and E and this takes a picture of everything we have underneath. And with this layer, I will go into filter, blur, and I'll add some Gaussian blur and something around 25, 41 pixels. We'll go with this and I'll click OK. As you can see, that blur is my whole image. So I need to make a black mask, hold down option, click on the mask. And then with a brush with white, very soft um, brush, I'll just paint over here and soften up that those funny business that's happening in there. Great. Now, because we soften this image over here, our texture doesn't match anymore. If I zoom in at 100%, and we look here, you see we have this texture from the noise. And then as we go where we soften things, we have no texture. So you can really see that from here to here. Let me see, make my brush smaller. So you can see over here there's no texture and here there's texture for this part that we blurred. So with this layer selected, make sure you click on the bird image. I'll go into filter noise and add noise and now we need to add some noise to match our original noise so i'm going to move the amount you see that's too much so i need to move it just until we get the right amount of noise and i think this amount of noise matches it pretty well now our noise here matches the one over here for my case over here was amount of 7.16 click ok Command zero to fit to screen. And now you can tell that we blurred that background. This was the before, this is the after because we blurred it and added noise back into it to make it match the rest of the image. I'm going to flatten my image by right clicking on the layer and go flatten image. And the next thing I wanna do is to blur and deepen a little bit of the background colors. And to do so, I will be using an action I have here. It's called Turner. It's from the GTG collection. That's the Get, Get, Gatsby, I think. And it's from their painterly collection. So Turner, I will just click this play button. If you do not have this, don't worry about it. You don't have to use it. I just like to use it on my wildlife images, even on portraits. As you can see, kind of blur the background a little bit. Even the bird makes it like this painterly look. And it also deepens the color. So this is our before, this is the after. Now, of course, I do not want to soften my bird. I want my bird to stay very sharp. So because of that, I will go here onto my background where the bird is. And then I'll go to my object selection tool over here. And I will click on my bird to select the bird with the object selection tool. And then with the bird selected, I'll hold down shift and I'll click on this branch so I can select the branch as well. So now with both of these selected, I'll go for here on my Turner, re remove this uh, mask because I don't need it. I'll create a new mask. I still have my selection of the branch and the bird and holding down option to make a negative mask. I'll click on this mask. As you, as you can see, now we're masking off the bird. Now, if I turn it on and off, you see we get a little bit of halos. Let me just move to the move tool. You get a little bit of halo here on the branch. So we need to fix that. So I'll go with my mask. I will uh, zoom in. You see this haloing that is happening. So with this uh, mask, I will take a soft brush. I will take a white brush and I'll just paint on the edges just to kind of blend that in and get rid of this haloing that is happening. That's from darkening of the background and you know, the selection was not very accurate. So just blending it in and nobody will know. All right. Do we have any more of that? I think everything else is looking pretty good. I can even soften the edges a little bit of the bird. Make sure I don't have any of that funny business going on. I'll just go with my very soft edge of my brush. So there you go, blend it in. Command zero to fit to screen. So let's see this again. This is before Turner, this is after. I like that. I think things are looking great. 
Now I'm going to flatten my image again, click on my background layer, right click on it, flatten image. And now I need to remove that noise because I really don't like noise in my images. Command J to duplicate my image, go to filter, Topaz Lab, and I will be using Topaz Denoise AI. This is my favorite program for removing noise. I tried many, many programs and this is the one that works every single time. Now in Topaz Denoise, I will click on this automatic AI model and model preferences. And Topaz tells me this is the setting I should be using, remove noise 22 and enhance sharpness 37. Now I don't necessarily agree with this because you can see the noise is completely gone. I'm gonna zoom in at 200% even though you should not be doing that when you edit your images. But I just want to show you the noise is completely gone. It is very, very smooth. This is the before, this is the after, before and after. But what I don't like is the sharpening it added. You see, it kind of makes it a little bit fake. Like it's very sharp, but my image was already very sharp to begin with. So I'll take this and has sharpness down, maybe to around eight. And I think that is a more natural looking image. So I'll click apply and now Topaz Denoise will apply these settings to my image and remove all the noise. It should not take very long. And there you go. So now this is before we added the noise removal. Let me just zoom in so you can see. I'll zoom in at 100%. So this is before and this is after before and after ticks are looking good command zero to fit to screen i'm going to flatten my image one more time and now what i would like to do is go over here and choose my elliptical marquee tool and i will draw an oval maybe around uh, this size maybe a little bigger something like that great and now with this oval selected, I will go to my curves tool and brings down the brightness and you see it darkens, it makes like a circle with darken. Well, what I want to do is create a um, vignette. So I need it to be the opposite. So I'll go into my mask and do command I and I will inverse it. And now we're darkening everything except the bird. I'll go command T. I really wanted this to be bigger. I think I went too small. So I'm going to go with something like this. Maybe even oriented to kind of fit the direction of my bird, something like that. And now you see it is very, very sharp, the edges. I wanted to blend it all in. So with my mask selected, I'll go into the properties over here. If you don't see it, go to Windows and go to Properties over here. So click on the mask and then on your properties, increase the feather. So I will increase it all the way to about, let's see. We'll go with about 400 pixels. So what that this does, you see if I go on and off, you can see it just creates a nice vignette. And maybe this is a little bit too dark. I don't want it to be that obvious. I'll just take it up a little bit. So before and after, before and after. That looks great. I will flatten my image again. And this time I will go to file, close and save. And now Photoshop will send this edited image into Lightroom. So here is our final edited image. And I really like what it looks like. Let's look again what it looks from the beginning. Let me reset the original image. So we went from this image to this image. I think that is pretty great. I hope this was helpful and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing and I'll see you in my next video.